Good day, dear students. I am with you to talk about the next lecture. Today, we are going to talk about untranslatable words. Let's begin. Untranslability means no equivalent can be found when translated into another language. A text that is considered to be untranslatable is considered a lacuna or lexical gap. Sometimes they say it is translator's greatest nightmare. What does it mean? When you come across this untranslatable word, sometimes you will be frustrated, you will become nervous. Translator, however, can resort to a number of translation procedures to compensate for a lexical gap. Meaning can uh, virtually always be translated, if not always technically accurate. There are different approaches to untranslability of the words. Some say there is nothing that cannot be made to make sense. Sometimes they say these kind of words have no sense and there is no meaningful translation. But some say the kind that creates and makes everything out of nothing. That means you have to do something out of nothing. If you are an experienced translator, you have to translate it. Many linguists maintain that any given culture can only be fully understood in its own particular language. Give attention, fully understood. You can understand partially and you can fully understand it in its particular language. And these untranslatable words are nothing new to experienced, experienced translators who know uh, the, how to find the way out from these situations. So when you come across with these kind of things, you have to learn, you have to search. Writings of Pushkin can only be truly understood and appreciated when read in his mother tongue in Russian language. If you read original work in its original language, you will understand it fully. Amar Hayam's writings or works can be understood in the original Persian language version, as they say, as linguists say. It means no translation is perfect. So what happens when translators encounter untranslatable phrases? Just they don't have an English equivalent or they don't have any kind of equivalent in the target language. So what happens? Let's talk about it. This neat and orderly attempt at technical accuracy does not always convey the correct meaning in every language. Even you can give the meaning of the word, but sometimes you may lose technical accuracy of the word or sentence. Even if two languages are similar in construction, there are problem areas where they don't intersect. There is no adequate equivalent expression. What to do? Where to go? What to search and how to search? What are some examples of untranslatable words or phrases? Let's talk about them. Which phrase or word cannot we translate in our future profession? What should we know about them? Let's begin. Sometimes bread and butter in English as the two go together and are considered the very basics of food. Sometimes they use the saying, he earns his bread and butter. He earns his living. However, however, although Italian has a word for butter, burro, it's not understood the same as our English butter. It is unsalted, used for cooking and never spread on bread or any other food on the, t at the table. Therefore, English concept of bread and butter as a basic food staple or a slang usage would be completely incomprehensible in Italian language because they don't use on, on the bread as well as they cannot use as the same because so this word cannot be translated into that language. How do untranslatable words occur? Different cultures, 
different histories, different languages, different arts of different cultures, different nations, just the will cause these untr untranslatable words. How do translators handle these untranslatable words? What can do ways do they search? What kind of techniques do they use in order to give the meaning of this kind of words? So how do translators interpret words between languages without becoming hopelessly lost? Translation is not an art of perfection. It is, and translation at its core is a simply rendering some words from source language into talk language. First one, they use adaptation or word creation. Let's talk step by step about this methods. Adaptation. What do you think? What kind of method can it be? Adopting. Adaptation. Modifying. Cultural adaptation is the art of making the translated text tailored for a particular culture, demographic, market, political system, and community as a whole. New York Times, we can say Gazeta New York Times. The person who doesn't know what is it will understand from the word Gazeta in Russian language. Thanksgiving Day, we can just adopt it to using the phrase in Russian, Praznik. Благотворение, and so on. It is Praznik Thanksgiving Day. From the word Praznik, Russian listeners will understand that the Thanksgiving Day is some kind of holy event. Sometimes they translate it as a day of gratitude. Sometimes, but as a Thanksgiving Day, you, can, you will not lose the meaning, original sense of the word. Next one is word creation. Next lesson. Will we create a new word? What kind of method is it? Have they ever thought about it? So let's talk about it. This method is more accurately word borrowing. Borrow a word from another language. For example, Halloween. When we say Halloween, everybody understands. So we create a new word in Uzbek or in Russian language, saying Halloween just or go borrowing it. Borrowing that means taking over word from other languages. So far, Kresan just is the other borrow, borrowed words from the other languages into English. So, when we speak in Russian Banya or Thanksgiving in American language and Spanish bullfighting to a person whose culture has absolutely no similar concept Sometimes that person will not understand. So here we just use adaptation or we have to use word creation. Even while word creation, we have to give the meaning at the beginning. Sometimes they use adaptation, borrowing, calcul, compensation, it means addition, paraphrasing sometimes we paraphrase. Sometimes we give explanation in translator's notes. At any rate, if it's difficult, so simply paraphrase it. So let's talk about the examples. Hellbilly, American, живущий в сельской местности. You know, hellbilly, how can you translate? Of course not. Sometimes you can give the definition or in footnotes. On footnotes you can give translators this explanation. Face palm. Выражать стыд, неодобрение или раздражение. Буквально ладониться. But what about an Uzbek language? Do we have this kind of phrase? Jesus, face palm. How? How can we translate it? What about in Uzbek language? Think about it. Think about the translation. Sometimes when you use this gesture, we say, oh, boy. Oh, Boże, in Russian language. But there is no the, uh, translation of the word face par in Uzbek language. The next word is spam. Что-то нежеланное, неприятное. Spam is a shortening word from 
spiced ham, pryanı içine. It became very popular. Up to date. What about Spam? In Uzbek language, Spam in Russian language. Can we, do we have a, just a translation in Uzbek language? No translation. We borrowed the food Spam. Coffee face. We whisper for sale. Palyate. Next one, football video. Do we have translation in Russian or Uzbek language? Football, football na yevdava. Especially we use this phrase in English language whose uh, husband is interested in football games sometimes he leaves uh, just the house to watch the uh, football match and so on. Football Nerdava. Somehow interesting. Think about translations of the words. And next time during the lesson we'll talk about your results, about your translation. Thank you very much for being with me. Thank you.